One of the most interesting slides provided in the announcement of SpaceX's plans to send a BFS around the moon was this timeline. Providing these times, plus the announcement that the vehicle would pass within 200 kilometers of the moon's surface, is enough to calculate almost everything we need to know about the vehicle's trajectory, including what the flyby will look like to the passengers on board. The trajectory being used is similar to the lunar free return that I spoke about in my last video, but it incorporates a single small maneuver in order to accomplish a much closer flyby in a much shorter time than would otherwise be possible with a free return. A trajectory like this can be launched when the moon is anywhere in its orbit. But if we assume the passengers want to be treated to the spectacular lunar sunrise just as they pass their closest approach, the best time to launch would be near the first or third quarter moon. This simulation assumes a launch on September 18th, 2023, just when the moon is waxing into its first quarter. Because this departure is in the plane of the moon's orbit, it's inclined about 28 degrees to Earth's equator, and that means it misses the bulk of the Van Allen radiation belts, so the passengers don't have to take any excessive precautions against radiation. The vehicle then coasts for two days without any major burns beyond minor course corrections of a few meters per second to account for errors in translunar injection. Two days later, the vehicle sees the Earth set into the lunar darkness and temporarily loses contact with controllers on the ground. Ten minutes later, the sun breaks the horizon, and the passengers get their first view of the lunar surface as the vehicle skims the moon at 200 kilometers and 2.5 kilometers per second. Fourteen minutes later, after 23 minutes of being out of contact with Earth, the passengers are witness to the famous Earth rise from the sunlit side of the moon. Ten hours after the flyby, the vehicle is now on its way back to Earth. But the moon has perturbed the orbit so that it now intersects Earth's surface at a suicidally steep flight path angle of 75 degrees. If the spacecraft were on a lunar free return trajectory, the higher altitude flyby of four to 6,000 kilometers was perfectly spaced to perturb the spacecraft onto a normal re-entry corridor. But flying closer to the moon has caused the spacecraft to lose more of its orbital velocity relative to the Earth and descend back towards the Earth at a much steeper angle. If the spacecraft continued on this course, it would subject its crew to a lethal 300 g's of deceleration, assuming they even survived long enough to avoid burning up. So while the spacecraft is still in the vicinity of the moon, it points its thrust vector back towards the Earth-Moon axis and performs a short five-second burn, imparting 100 to 200 meters per second of velocity and shifting the trajectory onto a more mild entry corridor. One caveat about this simulation, it's not possible to calculate the inclination of the flyby from available information, so I've assumed an equatorial flyby for simplicity. But if the passengers wanted to view regions at higher latitudes on the moon, a higher inclination flyby is completely possible. The only trade-off would be requiring a slightly higher delta V at translunar injection and at the trajectory correction maneuver.